I really love the summary of this book. Ava Woods disappeared after a blind date. Bess decides to date every single guy at Ava's college until she finds the culprit. If that was what actually happened, I'd love this book to death and give it a 10 out of 10. Argofunk book review, Argofunk book review. Luckily, the school is running an optional study program this week, so Nancy and Bess can enroll as students. They decide to live in different dorms, so no one will know they're together. But then they share all their meals together, and Bess visits Nancy multiple times per day. What happened to pretending not to know each other? Ava has been getting secretive phone calls from an elderly woman who's worried about a box. Nancy talks to the old woman, but she refuses to say what the box is, because that would spoil the ending to the mystery. Nancy meets the flirty Darian Olivares. He acts a lot like the flirty college guy from four books ago, although Nancy's a lot less interested in him. Ava was last seen leaving for a blind date with Jim. Nancy visits Campus Connections, uh, the dating service run by Luke. Luke says they keep records of every single date, but he refuses to give any information about Ava's date with Jim. Nancy does some pretty shoddy detective work here. The conversation goes something like this. Why do you need to know who Ava's date was? Uh, I can't say. I can't tell you unless you explain why he's so important. Okay, I guess I'll leave then. Come on, Nancy, at least try to make up a good excuse. Nancy meets Maya. Maya and Peter run a volunteer program for elderly people. Ava volunteered there. We learn Ava had a big fight with her parents before she disappeared, and Bess signs herself up for the dating service. I hope she answered yes to the question about dating guys named Jim. Nancy breaks into the dating offices. She finds that Ava's file is missing. That's when the culprit knocks Nancy unconscious and murders Luke Jeffries. The police suspect Nancy is the culprit, which is a neat idea that I wish the book had followed up on. Instead, it's just a way to throw suspicion on Ava's parents. Why would they want the police to investigate a murder instead of Nancy? Is it because they're the killers? Nancy meets Ava's ex-boyfriend, Vince, who's extremely angry. She tries questioning every student named Jim, but she's too late. Darian already questioned the Jims. Now they're angry and refuse to say anything. There's more shoddy detective work here. Nancy questions two out of the three Jims. If the first two aren't Ava's date, that means the third one is. But Nancy doesn't bother to find him or question him. Why not? A photo of Nancy being arrested makes the local paper, and Bess goes on a date with Vince. The date is ruined when he sees Nancy and starts accusing her of murder. The culprit returns Ava's car to the college, then ransacks Ava's room. Nancy realizes Ava's books are missing. They're in her gym locker, along with an address and a bank key. Bess goes on a date with the third gym. He says he never met Ava because Luke canceled the date at the last minute. Nancy searches Luke's dorm room and mailbox. It turns out the culprit paid Luke $500 to cancel the date. Hmm. A stranger sees Nancy and gives her grief about being in a men-only dorm. Darian says it's okay. She's just upset and needs comforting. He kisses Nancy on the lips as part of this made-up story. Nancy is not amused. The mystery address belongs to Maya. It's a large place with a garage and fishing cottage. Maya refuses to talk once Nancy brings up Ava. Bess gets a job at the Elderly Assistance Program. She meets a woman who wants to have her necklace put in a bank safe deposit box. That's the box the mystery caller was talking about. The Elderly Assistance Program apparently makes a habit of storing clients' valuable jewelry at the local bank. Luckily, Ava left behind a spare ID card, and she looks a lot like Nancy. Nancy impersonates Ava and opens Ava's personal box to find some missing jewelry. Nancy realizes Maya and Peter are the culprits. She searches their house and finds Peter has a work room where he duplicates bank keys. Ava's tied up in the fishing cottage. The culprits kept her alive because they needed her bank key. The culprits capture Nancy and Bess, but Nancy fakes having a seizure 
This is enough of a distraction that she's able to steal the culprit's gun. Everybody runs away. Ava and Peter fall into the pond, but Darian shows up with the police in time to save them. The end. Post-book follow-up. This book is a touch below average for this series. It's not bad, but the suspect balance is a little off because Vince isn't introduced until page 64. That leaves Darian and Luke as the only suspects for the first third of the book. So when Luke is killed, that cuts the suspect list in half. There's a half-hearted attempt to throw suspicion on Ava's parents and roommate, but they don't make the suspect list, and none of them could be Ava's mystery date, the tall, dark, and deadly man. I saw one reviewer say the book was bad until about halfway through. I can agree with that assessment. That's about when Vince is introduced and those minor suspects disappear. The book disappointed me, because I thought it would be all about dating. The title and description promise dating. Instead, it's just a coincidence that Ava was supposed to be on a date when she was kidnapped. What a letdown. A criminal blind dating service at a college is such a good premise for a mystery, I wanted to see it. I'll be cheeky and give this book one point for every date that Bess has. I give Nancy Drew Files number 66, Tall, Dark, and Deadly, a 2 out of 10.